Dotty Triple Mania production this was. And if you never saw Triple Mania, spent like $10 million on wrestlers, a $1 million in stage, and like 10 bucks for production. It's like I produced. Oh, I have to remember when I'm actually on this thing. Happy Easter, everyone. I am the Easter Bunny. Uh, who is normally a hobo, Tom? And you are watching the hobo and his girlfriend wrestling show. Yeah, and um, hopefully I'm still working on that girlfriend issue. And you can see my bunny ear. I guess I'm supposed to wear it like this. I don't know. It was like a couple bucks. But again, I'd like to wish everyone a happy Easter today. Yeah, it's Easter time. That means... Oh, shoot, I should have had that. That means, and man, wait a second, I freaking forgot my thing again. Darn it, this is what happens when I imbibe for the first time and eat meat for the first time in freaking 40 days. Right now, I have my pizza cooking. Delicious Greek inspired lamb pizza. And because it is Easter, this shot goes out to you, everyone. Oh, wow, I haven't done straight shots of vodka in a long time. I'm going to have some fun hoboing tonight. Again, happy Easter to everyone out there in YouTube land. Um, today is a special day. Not only just like you saw me on YouTube drink, I guess you can do. I don't know. But it's also Easter mania. Easter mania. Easter mania. So therefore, on every special occasion, you get a special YouTube video. And this comes straight from the Daytona Beach Bump Fight League. Again, this is Easter mania, folks. And in our first match for Easter mania, we have Corporate Tom, the killer of all holidays. The person who tells you, get back to work. Ruth takes on the Easter Bunny. That should be fun. Then we have in a backstage segment. Wait, do we have that yet? I don't know. I forget. I added one thing in there. But we have the Cuba Connection take on the Lucha Dragons for the International Lucha Libre Tag Team titles. And then we have a special backstage session because La Generica showed up. Everyone knows that all those Spanish hotties out there, they're all Catholic. So again, she celebrated Easter in her own special way backstage. I wonder with who. You'll see. Then we have Aiden Awesome versus Tosh in a steel cage match for the always underweight champion. Twisted Pixie! Versus Goody Goody Heather in an Extreme Rules match for the bestest girlfriend ever title. And then your main event of the evening, boys and girls, children, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. The Easter Bunny proudly brings to you in this corner, fighting literally from under the bridge. Hobo Tom. And the champion coming via Boston, Massachusetts he is the reigning current fighting under the bridge champion Diamondback Jack Maverick. And I think there's also a tease to what's happened to what's gonna happen on Cinco Mania. It's coming up in two weeks because lunch really late. Um today's the twenty first of April. And literally in two weeks it's Cinco de Mayo. Ooh. And that means it's Cinco Mania time. Oh, and also 
because I just made and uploaded a video, and in one minute I have to get my pizza out. And again, if you stick at, stick around to see the end of this video, you can see how I make a Greek-inspired lamb goat, uh, uh, Greek-inspired pizza with lamb, arugula, and goat cheese. Should be good. I'll tell you what, I had a taste of that lamb after not eating meat for 40 long days and 40 long nights. Oh, so good. But wait! There's also something special. In fact, I have to put this on our Facebook page. So you know what? Just for you, Jennifer. Um, original bartender's cocktail. I am bananas over you. My stupid ex-girlfriend got me a stupid Christmas gift. I might as well use it. So you know what, Jennifer Borden? Oh, shoot. I'll have to say something during that. Uh-oh. I'm in trouble already. I think I've already violated YouTube several times already. That's what happens when I start just taking shots. Not only does this holy shit go out to you. I just got that, I just made that GIF from a previous show at NXT. This shot also goes out to you, Miss Jennifer. Ah! That'll pull, put some hair on your mustache. Make you slur your speech a lot, too. So again, please, everyone enjoy Easter Mania. A couple news and notes. Barring any unforeseen circumstances, you can see this guy. Oh, well, the Easter Bunny, also known as Hobo Tom. Hobo Tom. At the Multicultural Center here in Daytona Beach. And I'm going to post that again. Well, it'll, it'll be running through, through this video. But I'll post that again Monday night when I do my Raw review and recap. And as well as Tuesday when I do my SmackDown review and recap. That's not as strong as I thought it would be. I figured I'd be like a mess by now. But you can see this guy. Again, also known as the Easter Bunny, all aka Hobo Hobo the Easter Bunny and Hobo Tom. That's difficult to do. How does Randy Orton do that without screwing up? Enough about that. But you can see me at the Multicultural Center here in Daytona Beach on Friday, April 26th. Probably, I have to get my ticket, so I'm going to be there 6.30. Oh, please let Candace Lee be there signing autographs. Oh, please, Lord. Said a little prayer for something I probably shouldn't be saying a prayer for. But it is Easter, so you never know what's going to happen. And you can see this guy, Hobo Tom. I used to doing it from the one way. Hobo Tom. Oh, that feels weird. Hobo Tom. At the Multicultural Center here in Daytona Beach. I'll be a lot sober, I can promise you that. For NXT. NXT. Yeah, I'm probably... Five, six thirty. I know I do have to work that day at one job. 
Unless the other stupid job calls me in again. F them. So you'll see me there probably about 6.30ish. I do have to get my ticket and get in line. And I'm going to bring, I'm going to be the, the geeked out Mark with a Candice LeRae picture. I'll probably be wearing, because it's Candice LeRae. Oh, fudge. I got that dumb piece of woman, that Candice LeRae shirt. And she don't get her autograph. Well, <coughs> to her. I got a new girlfriend. Can't be Candice because she's married. But you'll see this guy. Again, ladies, there's always room for that girlfriend. Again, you can insert your pick here. Welcome, folks, to another edition of Daytona, the Daytona Beach Bump Fight League Wrestling, DBBLW. And welcome to Easter Mania. As we just saw, here's Hobo. Here is no, not Hobo Tom. This is Corporate Tom approaching the ring. What are all you people doing out here? Don't you have a job to go to? Oh, you sons of bitches, get back to work. Because you have to go buy stuff. I, I need to keep my job. Damn it. Damn bums. Look at them all. God, I hate this ring. I can't believe he put this together from like beach garbage. Bring out my opponent. This is Easter Mania. I'm gonna ruin Easter for everyone. I'm gonna kill the Easter Bunny. The Easter Bunny's gonna die at my hands. Wait, wait, what the hell is this? This isn't, this isn't the Easter Bunny's music. Wait a second. Wait, I know that music. That's not the Easter Bunny! That's... John Cena with... in a pink shirt and Easter Bunny ears. What, what is this hot pile of garbage that I'm seeing? I mean, we're supposed to get the Easter Bunny out here and... and uh, how, how did John... How did I afford to pay John Cena to do this? This the heck? I cannot believe this. This is almost unheard of, folks. John Cena and the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League. I mean, is it really that bad in pro wrestling nowadays? Is, is everyone leaving the WWE? Well, the DBBLW. Oh, look at that horrible crowd. There's the ocean in the background. And you have Watchtower as a police fan there. Hi, Mom. Again, this is Easter Mania, folks. Again, happy Easter to everyone. You know it's Easter Mania because we have the Easter Bunny. Singles action is underway, and in this one, I wouldn't attempt to predict what's going to happen. That's it. He's done. The heck? Oh, look at that hard, hard railing, though. Those are just bike racks. Stupid Easter Bunny. That wild strike found nothing but empty air that time. <laughs> Man, that's what you call swinging for the fences and missing. He wants to do this in the ring, and I don't blame him one bit. What a counter that was. Not today, too fast. Oh. Stupid Easter Bunny. Take this. You know, ruin my ruin my work day? What's wrong with you? You should be at work. What are you doing here in Daytona Beach? Back to work. Oh. 
At this point, it's all about how he responds and potentially rebounds. And hey, I still can't believe they pay me for this. damage did that do? A lot from the looks of it. Dodges to the side of that one. Is this it? Oh, on the outside of the ring. Boy, there's no way he's going to be able to stand there. All you people get back to work. What? How do you get up from that? Ooh, a it's over. Side Russian looks him. He may be in the best physical condition I've ever seen him in. Oh, he missed. Oh, nobody home that time. That's it. He's out. Oh, going after the knees of John Cena. So much history here in Baltimore. In fact, it was in this city that superstar Billy Graham defeated Bruno San Martino for the WWE Championship back in April 1977. Back on the inside. And thank goodness I just had my Diet Coke knocked all over the place. <laughs> What? What? Oh! How did I do that? When this guy's on, look out! Quick thinking to avoid that. Oh, this spells trouble right here. That's it. He's done. You can bet every superstar on the roster is crap. He can pin his opponent right here. I think this is it. Oh! The match is over. And Corporate Tom just defeated the Easter Bunny. All of our holidays are being ruined because of this one character, Corporate Tom. He's taken out the fuck. He's taken out Santa Claus. He's taken out. The ever fun techno Blue Ranger, the Easter Bunny. That's right, folks. I won. Get back to work. I'm the greatest. Yeah. Yeah. It's the time to collect a paycheck. Yeah. There we go. Look at those nice belts. Looking belts. I don't want to give him the belts. So now, next, folks, we have our tag team match. Remember, this is really just titles only because it is Easter Mania. 
<laughs> Dude, I made them look good. I made them a good looking tag team though, I'll tell you that. I took some time and effort for that. Wait for it. Oh, look at those belts. Those belts look so good. Look at that! There's a, there's a police carrier! Look at that terrible. I don't have to be objective as an announcer, but you hope they're being careful. I mean, that's not exactly meant to be walked on. Good Lord. I feel this gets more dangerous with every step. Watch out up there. What the, you know, a tank. It's going for it again. That's it. He's done. These are great competitors, great, tremendous gladiators here in WWE. Some of the best superstars that WWE have to offer. Nice dodge there. think there are two teams I'd rather see square off against each other right now. This is amazing. Wait a minute. Uh-oh. Kalisto is looking to end it. being put to the test. This is not where he wants to be at this point in his tag team match. Regardless, people will look back on this night and tell stories to their grandkids about it. 
Kalisto is getting ready here. Now it's your turn. That's right. It's time to go for the ride. He's seen it up. Here he comes. Plane flight to Bolivia. Boom. He's done. Tag team championship at stake. Which team wants it more? Well, that's the question of the night. That's the question this match will answer, Michael. This might not end well. Uh oh. Oh, Will Barrel Longblower! Are we the new tag team champions? Oh, so close! Championship at stake. Which team wants it more? Whoa, that's walking the, the top the rope? That's the question this match will answer, Michael. Watch out here. Well, that missed him all right. Hey, did you look before firing? What an idiot. And here comes his partner. Surprisingly fun. Title. No title for you. That's what I used to say. I mean, don't look good though. Contest is a steel cage match. This match oh, look at that cage. The, the ominous cage is. How's it hanging over the ring? It must have a gantry crane there or something. That's a good looking belt though, the all these underweight championship held by Taz. <laughs> Way too much energy. Way too hyper.
again, good shot of the, of the police vehicle there. See the ocean in the background. How do I, how do I afford fireworks? How do I afford any of this stuff? Again, good shot of the police cruiser right there. They have to keep order. We got a terrible looking crowd. Look at that crowd. How do they get in? Did I give away tickets? Did, I, did they pay me or do I pay them? They probably, look at that one scuzzy guy. Jeez. The hell did he get in the stadium? Damn, there's like some gantry crane holding that cage in place. I just like to play the intros. The intros are freaking great. See, I still have to make El Drunko too. Or El Drunko is going to make his debut next show. That's a good looking book. We're all along for the ride on this one. But make no mistake about it, we're going to have a winner. Oh my, what a move! And it's up. He got the shoulder up. And he fails to connect with anything that time. Man, that was some miss, all right. I could feel the breeze all the way over here. Oh, wait, nice reversal. He's doing everything he can to get his bearings back here. Otherwise, this match could be over sooner than anyone could have anticipated. Yeah, Cole, this is when you have to settle things down. Get the blood flowing back in your body and change it. He's out. And the shooter's up now. That's a kick out. Nice. You know, it's hard to believe, but it looks like he still has some gas left in his tank. Great hole being applied. Good to be back in Music City tonight, Nashville, the beautiful capital of Tennessee. There may be no stopping him. Going for it all here. It's safe to say the entire WWE locker room has just been put on notice. We got a cover. And a kick out. Uh, the kick out's off and saving. This match goes on. There's no keeping this guy down tonight. Uh, it's going to take more than that to keep him down. Oh, the hobo breaker! Folks, 
Yes, I would not be surprised if we were looking at the crowning of a new champion here tonight. I don't recall the last time I saw a more focused challenger. He's sending a message to the entire WWE locker room here. That's it. He's out. He's talking to his opponent from the top to watch it. Not a lot of spring left in his step right now. This is a grueling championship match. Nobody watched. Look at this that time. It's oh, incredible. Oh, man. Nice reverse. Is this it? I can't tell you how many victims have suffered the same fate. He thinks he has it. And a kick out. And that's all that matters. This match continues. I don't know where he's finding the strength to stay in this one. I can't believe it. He just won't go away. Here we go. Oh, the infamous. Oh, he has a homo breaker on. Put wrestling acumen. Couldn't match. 
I'm having a hard time figuring out what they're going to do next. Me too. I've given up even trying to figure it. It could be over here. And she raises her shoulder to interrupt the referee's count. She sure did. Wait a minute. She's going for it again. Just when you thought. You've got to believe this one's over. Hey, Cole, this could do it. I think so. She's on an absolute tear right now. Go. Each of these competitors is looking for the slightest hit of weakness in the other. Well, that's a strategy you have to always have in the back of your head, Cole. If you ever see a weakness in your opponent, you got to jump on it. Cole, will she win it here? I think so. Oh! It's worse than Pixie lost. Can anyone defeat GG Heather? She could not get the table spot off. Oh. Oh, what a shock. Uh-oh. This is not good. Saw the flaming table spot, but she just could not do enough. She won that flaming table spot and that might be that might have been her downfall. Too much. Wow. No bueno. Give me my bell. That's right. That's right! I'm just camping still! Bunch of bombs! You don't deserve to look at me! Filthy animals you are! God I hate the State Total Beach Bum Fight League! Hmm? I'm a champion? What did I do? Oh, that's right. I showed up in, um... Oh, wait. Who's this? Oh, yeah. Look at that under-the-belt championship. That's awesome looking. She looks good on Jack Mavic too. Remember folks, this is the main event of the evening! The main event of Easter Mania! You're the Under the Bridge Champion! Diamondback Jack Maverick will also be featured in whether he's the champion still or not, he's going to be featured in the next live hobo show. And that's going to be Cinco Mania on the 5th of May in honor of Cinco de Mayo. Diamond Jack Maverick is in the ring. He has his cowboy boots, his vest, his tattoo, the belt, his cowboy hat. Just like, yeah, whatever. I can't believe I'm here. Get me out of this place. I forget when I won this belt. Do I still have a belt? No music. This piece of garbage belt. I found this in the river. Oh, that's right. I can say that now. Twisted Pixie gave me this belt she found in the river. I don't know. It's a piece of garbage. God damn people. I'm gonna fight you. I'm gonna bite your nose off. Pee on your back. God damn it. I hate you. So angry as Hobo Tom. I have to make that tattoo different one day. Yeah, I found this belt. You people couldn't deal with it. Out here in my underwear, you, you're a bum. I'll fight you later. Yeah, whatever. I found this belt in the river. Fishing for my food. From under the bridge. Hobo Tom. Shows up in his underwear. All beat up from his, from his bum fights.
Also known as the Under the Bridge. And look at that crowd. Look, look at that hooker. There's a hooker in the audience. What the hell is she doing? How do Daytona Beach hookers afford to get in this place? What do they charge them? Second. Well, thanks for coming. He's starting to show signs of fatigue. I fully expect him to bounce back, though. This is the type of one on one atmosphere where he thrives. Regardless, what a move! What a smart move! He's starting to feel it here. This could be the start of an ugly downward spiral if he's not careful. But hey, by the sounds of it, this crowd he's down, and now the official begins the count. And we're on the move again. Apparently, it'll take a lot more to end this match. Quick thinking to avoid that. Oh, wait, that can work. I like it. Let's get this thing done inside. And now he gets a bit of a reprieve as the official once more begins to count. What, what the heck? Come on, Jerry. Now get down from there. Don't make me come up there and get you. Oh, yeah, like you're going to do anything. Take it easy, Cole. You don't want a reminder of what this right hand feels like. Not that! Oh! Through the table. At this point, and he makes it back to his feet. In this match, will resume. Right time's over. And you have to think that's it. He's down, and now the official begins the count. Well, the ref can count to 100, Michael. This one's over. Oh, come on. Let the ref... Oh, man. This is getting... Oh, come on. Let the ref do his job. And he makes it back to his feet. In this... And he makes it back to his feet. In this match, Will was... Looks like another check in the win column. But I gotta be honest... I hope this is it, Kane. These guys have done so much harm to each other. Even if that doesn't do it, then what will? Great counter. Not today, too fast. Both of these competitors have so much resolve, it's going to take a minor miracle to keep one of them down. Apparently, it'll take a lot more to end this match, and he makes it back to his feet. In this match, Will resume. Oh, the lariat. He doesn't want He's down, and now the official begins the count. Three, I'm having a hard time figuring out what they're going to do next. Me too. I've given up even trying to fix fighting to get back to his feet, and he does. What's it going to take to keep these guys down? And he makes it back to his feet. Oh! Blood! Oh, man! Repeated chair shots. He might not be able to get up here. Now it's gut check time. This has been so exhausting. competitors trying to keep their wits about them. Well, Cole, it's so important not to lose your cool in a match like this, not to lose your focus. You make a mistake, and I guarantee you, your opponent is going to capitalize on it. And he makes it back to his feet. In this match, will resume. Right time's over. And here we go again. And that shot was dialed in. 
Oh, look at this. He may be out. Oh, man! The QT's down. And now the official begins the count. When he gets going like this, there are a few better. There may be no fighting out of this. Oh, my gosh! He might not be able to get up here. Look at this thing, man. Incredible! Oh, what's he going to do to follow that up? I gotta be honest. I hope this is it, King. These guys have done so much harm to each other. Quick thinking to avoid that. Oh, talk about getting flat. Oh, wait, nice reversal. Looks like he's going to test the effectiveness of that move. Each time the official counts in this match, he gets closer and closer to that final 10. Six, seven, eight, Taking a bit of a beating so far, but nothing that can't be done in this type of thing. Wow. He retained. Hubris. Hobo Tom tried to do too much. You should have just let him get counted out. Oh, blood. Should I just want to, I just want to see that? Can't believe that. Lost in the last Hobo standing match. That was a good match, though. <laughs> oh, still bleeding. Whoa! Look at all those places he's bleeding from in the head! No if, ands, or buts about it. That was a huge win. Now, when you get a one on qualifications, the only way to win is to knock your opponent out. Oh, you're right. And there's nothing like a little WWE mano a mano to get that blood flow. That's it. He's done. And he breaks the cover, forcing the referee to stop the count. Well, that's just not enough to get the job done. <laughs> Let's talk briefly about Steve Austin. Oh, what a terrific reversal by Steve Austin. Oh, stun her! You dumb son of a bitch. He's setting up. Is this it? Stun her! Before he came to WWE and revolutionized sports entertainment as Stone Cold. What a move! And the Super's up, and the match continues. I love this. Man, oh man, did he take a wild swing with that one. That's right. That was wild indeed. Good thing we're over here. And he gets out of the way. struggling a bit here. I don't think this is how he envisioned this match going here tonight. Well, at this point, I believe that this is still anyone's match. This is the WWE after all. Yeah, this is a toss-up. That's it. He's out. The career of Stone Cold Steve Austin is an amazing story. Austin launched the cultural revolution, Austin 316 in the Attitude Era, right along with it. The Austin Mr. McMahon rivalry. He did it. What a huge win. You dumb son of a bitch. That belt's mine. <laughs> That was a horrible stone called Steve Austin. Oh! A preview of Cinco de Mayo. And I can thank everyone for watching today. Again, please like, share, comment, subscribe. Oh, and stay tuned for a bonus video on how to make a delicious looking pizza. I call it my Greek inspired pizza, and I'll talk about that more later. Bye!
Hello everyone and welcome to a Easter edition. I guess you can see that my one little Easter decor I have in the hobo kitchen of the hobo kitchen. Yes. And today it's going to be making pizza. It's going to make a Greek inspired pizza. You can ask your typical ingredients. Oh, wait a second. There's a bowl. Wait a second. The sink. Wait a second. This is just another pizza thing. If you would like to see me make my deep dish pizza crust. Where's my deep dish pizza crust? Where's my deep dish pizza pan? Here's the pizza heads. Ah, uh, yes, the uh, deep dish pizza pan. Oh, it's nice and deep. Um, again, if you'd like to see how I make pizza, I've made two of, I think this is like the third time I've actually videotaped myself making a deep dish pizza. Um, you can go to previous videos, I want to say it's the New Year's edition, in which I make a crab ragoon pizza, and whenever I did my all-in edition. So I'm going to skip the first part, because again, all you do, you put warm water in a bowl, you put yeast in, put dough, mix, let us sit. So it gets kind of long and repetitious. The next video you'll see is me actually preparing some of the ingredients and showing you what the pizza dough looks like. And that's my cat, the hobo cat. And I'll be back. Okay, welcome back. I hope everyone enjoyed the wrestling matches. Remember, it is spring, or at least it's Easter time. Easter mania. And here we go, my pizza crust is done. So before I do that, however, oh, there's the hobo cat. The hobo cat, geez, I might be getting some more outside time. Hobo mania. Because it's a grilled. Okay, I guess you can get a couple more minutes outside time. Jeez, you're so fussy. There you go, cheese pot. Oh, the mongrels are back. I'm going to videotape the mongrels. Yes! The mongrels. Yappy dogs. We're going to hear I'm getting my grill ready. Very good grill is grill it is. Oh, there we go, my fire stick. Turn on the propane and we're showing my butt you dogs. And my buttocks maximus. Get that set up. Fire right up. Oh, last. Oh, okay, last. Oh, tofu. I think tofu. I guess I do. Oh. I got a piece of my grill. I guess. So let's see how that going. Fire stick going. We do things the, the most hobo way possible. Flames are going, that's good. Oh, that's a great though. That's okay, I just have to be careful about that. Back in. Cheese pot. I guess that the hobo bar, I mean my vanilla vodka, definitely need that. Set up there. Let's see here. Oh, the key ball. Again, so I have the grill kind of warming up. I'm going to start. I'm going to go, I think. I'm going to start what I do. 420. About 20 minutes, because again, pizza crust has been made. I've made that several times. Let's pull out of the refrigerator because I went to church. Save my soul. In the oven it goes. And let's see here. Let's 
So while that's cooking in the oven, my flexible piece of lamb. Yes, because I need lamb steaks. Because this will be the first piece of meat. That cheap a while ago. Be the first piece of meat I have eaten in since 40 days. I think I had a pretty good feast of shrimp scampi, a fish topped with shrimp scampi for Mardi Gras. That's the last bit of meat I ate. Now I have some delicious lamb. I'm gonna have some dog meat soon. Again, just wanna open this up. And so I have that sprig here. So you got some rosemary. right there. Oh, that smells so good. And the else is in the oven, so I'll be back. So we we'll close this up. I'll be back. Okay, let's see here. It's been about 20 minutes. So you can see the pizza crust is kind of par cooked, so that's good. And I have the grill going the back, so I'm gonna get the hobo cat back in. actually really good because again remember the trick with pan pizza is that you need to kind of form the crust and you do that so it's par cooked it's a little doughy on the inside which is good see I have to find my cat now with the grill going got a well above 500 oh look at that beautiful hunk of meat the fat rendered down so what I'm going to do That cook up there because I still want it to cook a lot. I just don't necessarily want it. You don't want it raw or rare or very bit rare. So I'm going to come back inside and then I'm going to go get the cat after I prep this. Or somewhere, I hope. Yeah, so what I've done in the past, let's see, let me prop this up on something. I'm probably going to leave that going. Okay, I do want to show you guys how I prep stuff here. Yeah, that's pretty good. Always oh, wear protection. It's going to be, I guess, sometime happy soon. Let me pull this out. Until it's kind of par-baked. It's not baked all the way through. You simply take a spoon, and just press down and break the crust a little bit. I'll show you what I'm doing shortly. Doing this process, you press it down because it's still going to puff up a lot. But what you do, you actually make the crust press a little bit. Everything else down because what happens is the air bubbles up. And the crust is going to break, that's okay. Because the crust is going to break, still bubble up. So now you can see there's a nice kind of depression here. And you can see the crust and depression. So the first thing, just like I always do, you know, whenever I make pizza, I just cook in really multiple steps. It takes a lot longer. 
But I'm not a fan of using tomato sauce because this is a more ethnic pizza. Uh, it's just kind of spiced diced tomatoes. Trusty. Can't help I got for I think two dollars. And you don't want it to be liquidy. Take this. You can see how it's kind of really liquidy in there. Strain out that liquid. And if a tomato falls in the drain, trust me, a lot worse things can happen. I'm always be careful with the metal rim. So I still have, oh, three minutes left. So that should be long enough. And take this. I make it a very traditional style. Let's go there. And because that, that crust is really so hot, the pan's even hotter. I just try and spread the tomatoes around fairly evenly. It's not going to be perfect by any stretch of the imagination. But they're not all clumped up either, which is a good thing. And then, then uh, in the dishwasher it goes. And the garbage for this. You can use any kind of cutting surface you want. Got a pretty well worn one here. Again, that's kind of what it looks like there. But this, again, I am a huge proponent of using whole milk mozzarella. To me, it just really tastes different. I know there's a way to open this up. And I throw my oven on because I don't necessarily want it to cool down. And I remember, this is also going to be the base layer. You should always have a towel somewhere. It's handy. Um, so this, actually, is going to be my cheese knife, I guess. Again, nice little, nice little thin slice like that. Nice little slice like that. On top of the pizza goes. Unfortunately, I'm right-handed, so it doesn't let me do things left-handed on this. Again, too thick, it takes forever to melt. Too thin, and it will burn on you. You always want to have plenty of cheese coverage. I like to take it right to the crust, and I'll show you what I mean by taking it right to the crust shortly. So I get all of my whole milk mozzarella on. And a lot of times I like to use the whole milk mozzarella really for a topping of the pizza. Not as the base cheese. So because doing that, I'm really going to put honestly as much as I can on the pizza itself. So normally I always save a slice or two. And be very careful when you do this. It's very easy to slice open fingers that way, and slicing open fingers is a bad thing. But you'll see what I mean by the fact that it's really entirely covered. Right like that. So, I'll be right back. This goes back in the oven. And be very careful, only because that pan is still hot. And it will give you a nasty burn. That goes in. I'm going to wait until that cheese is melted. And I'm going to pull out the... I have that for cheese. We then always use a separate cutting board. I like wood with me. As you can tell, the hobo cat's back inside. And what I'm going to do, I just turned the grill off. Because it's actually been... So it's actually been probably a good 20 minutes that lamb to cook. Again, just going at 500 degrees. Gee, the key, what I always like to do with meat, and 
let us dinner one day. I'll tell you what, if the world ever ended, there was a great show. The world without people. The world ever ended. At least they would never be around. So, yeah, it's kind of cooled off a little bit, but still 400 degrees in this oven. Oh, look at that whole chunk of lamb. Delish. Yeah, you can tell it's actually not really burnt. There's, so that's the rosemary. Yeah, not burnt. It's charred. Well done. It's probably more so of, um, not well done, but probably medium well inside. And the key with meat, so you always want to let it rest, and I'll close that door in a moment. So you want to let the meat rest. It's, if it's even, I don't know if there's such a thing as well rare, but it's, if it's even remotely, just a little pink on the inside. Remember, it still has to go in the in the oven again. I mean, until that cheese is melting really well. So it's going. So that's going to be about a few more minutes. Okay, so let's get back to some cooking. Let's see, so that pizza. You can tell the cheese is really nice and melty. I'm gonna pull that out. This is actually truly good looking. That's right, I say any of my food's good looking. And you can tell how for the most part it's melty. You can still hear the crust kind of sizzling. So a couple things I'm going to do to finish off this pizza because yeah, and one way to tell if a pizza dough is actually done is that I still have toothpicks left over from my Super Bowl party. That's a whole other issue. That's a whole other video, I think. The toothpick. I'll find the thickest part. If it comes up nice and dry like that is, pfft, that crust for the most part is done. So now we're just going to finish it. Um, what I always like to do and this will vary. I still, you can still see the meat. It's just kind of there resting. Oh, it's so glorious looking. I'm gonna cut it up into small chunks eventually. But the first thing I like to do, because this is a kind of Greek inspired pizza, I do need some greens on it. And for that, I like some arugula. And for this, you really have to pile this on because once this hits the heat in the oven, this stuff's going to shrivel up and it's going to feel like nothing. So. People do like to put arugula on when it's nice and fresh. I prefer to actually cook it and just kind of pile it on. Because again, once this gets in the oven, all this moisture is going to go away. Again, you don't want to make it too thick. So that's pretty good. And this actually gives me a pretty good definition for my crust. So I have still have some food for tomorrow, which is always a good thing. That's going to be my lunch tomorrow, and when I, when I get back to work, oh, son of a bitch. Again, actually puts a nice little crust on. Then you can put red, red, some crushed red pepper on it. Again, once you see this arugula, even though it looks super puffy, once this cooks down, it's going to really be amazing. So I'm going to put on another layer of cheese, and this time I'm using goat cheese. So I have some natural goat cheese here. And I think this was the smallest pack I could find, because this is probably the one most akin to the size of the mozzarella I got. Goat cheese does have a little bit, it has a little bit different taste to it. It has a little twang to it. So with this, you know, it's a little bit more crumbly, almost like feta. Let's see here. A little bit more twang than feta. You can see the goat cheese again, very simply. I'm going to do this, try not to cut my fingers off, but again, relatively thin slices. If it allows me. I've actually really, I've, I think this will be like the second time I've actually had goat cheese as goat cheese, although I think feta is kind of partial goat cheese. I have no idea though. Then you can always email me in the comments. This is really crumbly for some reason. 
And always emailing me in the comments saying, How about Tom, you have no clue what you're talking about. You fat bastard. Get back to your day job. Again, I'm kind of putting this on the pizza as I can. Why do you think this would be quicker? Why are the other place was so much smoother like mozzarella? This is like sticky. This is like feta. I have no idea what feta cheese is made out of. I just know it's a cheese that's crumbly and it's hard. And I had goat cheese at one place and it was good. I had goat cheese at another place and it was freaking amazing. I want to say goat is actually a healthier cheese for you. I think from what I've somehow heard. And what I'm trying to do, um, you can see through the arugula a little bit. I'm trying to cover up the gaps in the cheese there. Though it sounds like it's going a lot easier than it should be. I thought I showered and stuff today. This is freaking tough. And I have piles of goat cheese all over the place. So every bite will actually get a pretty decent amount of cheese, whether it's goat cheese. And if you're really smart and careful and good with a knife, you're going to kind of scrape the rest of the cheese off the cutting board. Use as much as you can. And goat cheese, for some reason, is expensive. People, like, pay money for stuff. It's actually pretty good tasting, too. Like a cross between, to me, goat cheese is a cross between mozzarella cheese and cream cheese. Yeah, and always wash stuff. I put stuff in the sink and I still have, oh, about two minutes left. That's pretty good. Um, my meat's been resting. Bring the meat over here for preparation. Actually, I'm going to get rid of the rest of this stuff. I like red pepper flakes to me, it brings a little, I don't know, natural heat to it. Gosh darn it, mommy, you freaking rearranged my house. So, the other thing, I'm gonna grab the other knife. You got a lot of cross contamination, I have to put my other knife at it. I swear, I can't freaking find anything in this house when people clean up. Again, yeah, to avoid cross contamination, just use a different knife. It's not that hard. More difficult. Hang on, I'll be right there. So I'm going to cut strip wise. So again, I'm doing this for the camera angle. I feel like how delectable. Yes, delectable. Again, just the finest shade of pink. God, that's amazing. And slice it right on top of everything. Oh, I can smell it. Too bad you're not on smell vision, folks. This stuff smells freaking amazing. And so it's going through a fat cap. And the fat cap's just kind of fatty part of the meat. Oh, that's so good looking though. And you want to lay it evenly on the pizza. So you don't want it to cut up. And I'm just going to do the rest of this like I normally would. Because I'm right-handed and I'm doing this from a left-handed perspective. My dad would be proud because he's left-handed. But I am not left-handed. Ugh, judge. I mean, to my main man at work, I know you like meat. That is just so much the slightest bit pink. I think you would like it. Pink? Again, it's really just so the slightest bit pink. And you can see how you've kind of layered it on. So I'm going to upset them. And there's a natural break in the meat again. This is a lamb steak, so they've kind of had to... So again, a lot of animal meat tends to... And this is true of anything. It breaks up in different ways. You just have to kind of go with it. Again, so I'm just kind of slicing lengthwise. It's going to be so good tasting. And I always like to put my meat on top of any cheese I do. Um, if you want to do it differently, hey, power to you. Um, this is how I've always done it. 
has always been somewhat easy for me. And remember, this is going to go for just really another 10 minutes because for the most part, the crust is done. The mozzarella cheese, and this does not want to cut that way. So I'll do it my way. Again, you have to be very careful. The meat's still actually relatively warm, and you do not want to cut your fingers off. So this is kind of one of those do as I say, not as I do deals. You know, just it's my pizza. I can freaking handle my meat however I want. Pile it on. No such thing as two meat on meat's pizza. Actually, I am going to have some of this lamb though myself. It just smells so aromatic. It's so amazing smelling. Again, it's probably because I've gone without meat for 40 days and 40 nights. And when people have done that, they say, oh, freaking, even a freaking cheeseburger would taste good right now. It could be the crappiest cheeseburger from, from Burger King or McDonald's. It would probably be the most amazing. Oh my god. Hey, go read and trust. What the hell do I do to myself every year? I don't know what horse hates that, dude. I don't know. Freaking perfectly. No, it'd be a bit of me for me. Oh my god. I don't know why my mom doesn't like lamb. I don't know. I'm going to try it though. Oh my god, look how good that was. This honestly just gets 10 more minutes. And honestly, all this arugula, you think that's a lot of arugula? Trust me, it's not. My goat cheese, I don't know what's going to happen to the goat cheese. I've never melted, this is the first time I've ever used goat cheese. It'll be interesting, but we'll be back in about 10 minutes, folks. Okay, so that just took a little longer than I thought it would, only because I had to do something quickly. I was taking shots of vodka, which, which is that vanilla vodka, that's good stuff. So, our pizza is done. And you can tell, oh my god, that looks so freaking amazing. So again, to my buddy at work, and you can see all that pink is gone, you have nice, excellent slices. The crust is not burnt, which is a good thing. That nice kind of golden brown. That lamb looks freaking delectable though. And I'm gonna plate it up. So let's see how this cuts. My pizza wheel cutter is here. And this is a true test of any pizza. I know the meat always cuts tough. So again, on my pizza wheel. Crust cuts really good. The meat. Just like any other meat, it's always rough to cut through. Oh, you can tell that goat cheese, goat cheese I guess doesn't really melt. But it gets a lot freaking softer. And by no means am I a professional pizza cutter. So that means I can never really work at either Pizza Hut nor Domino's if I really need a job. And I'm going to have to move stuff around a little bit. The lamb's not tough. It's just meat. The meat's always hard to kind of do that. Oh, look at that smear. So freak, dude. Just that, that freaking smear of goat, goat cheese. It's freaking amazing. Now the ultimate test. So I'm going to put that there. I'm going to get out. Now my good pizza cutter should be in here, but it's not because no one knows where to put stuff away in, in the house. So here I have my good pizza cutter. You can tell because it has the straight edges. And again, I'm going to kind of move things around on the pizza because, again, I try to cut. Actually, the pizza, itself, the pizza crust itself and the cheese cut really smooth. But the meat 
just like when you cut anything with meat, it's always kind of catch as catch can. And I mean, you can definitely tell that there's definite slices. It's a lot better than the taco pizza. Taco pizza, I just kind of fell apart. But I actually learned the secret to taco pizza. To um, tater tot taco pizza. And let's see here. So I have a nice black pizza dish here. Yeah. The only thing I like to use black plates for pizza, it really makes no freaking difference. That's a nice plate. I have much nicer places, ladies. If you ever come over and I make you a specialty dinner. So really, came up for, I mean, minus the meat part, I mean, that's the whole, look at that steam come off that pizza too. Yeah, minus the meat, which, and meat is always tough to cut. Doesn't matter if it's real meat, like lamb, cheese egg meats, and oh wow, that's hot too. Oh my god, it's so good. And you can actually see what I mean by the fact that, ar that arugula actually kind of really decreased in size. So three pieces is going to be enough for now for this plate. Most important thing as always with any food is going to be the presentation. Whoa! Lights! Let there be lights! It's always going to be the presentation. So again, ladies, if you want every so often this freaking five-star meal made by a hobo. Oh my god, that, that looks so good. Minus the mess, because it's just messy. This is what you get for Easter Mania, folks. Again, look at that. Not, I, I, I can see just, gee, like... You really have to get close to see the pink in that meat. But again, it's kind of that, that well done. I don't, know, it's, I don't know if it's well done. Medium well, I mean, it's just perfectly done. Of course, on this, actually, one of these days, I think for my next video, I'm not gonna bring you in here. But for my next video, I'll show you a behind the scenes tour of the Hobo Studio. And I was taking shots of stuff because it is a friend's birthday, so happy birthday, Jennifer. Again, I did a shot in your honor, but because it is Lent, I have some vanilla vodka, some root beer. Oh my gosh, it's gonna taste amazing. And I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. I guess you can see the little TV thing at the end. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a happy Easter. Bye.